Hello folks, welcome to the channel. This is DoorDash Sucks here on YouTube and I wanted to go over a couple of comments that relate to a couple of past videos that I that I did. And um, so anyways, let's get right into the comments. So this is from Sanasta Epfotic. Uh, it says, a, a list needs to be compiled of businesses and chains that are practicing this kind of theft. I was talking about this to a few stores the other day before I saw this video or content created mentioned in the video and I already knew that this was happening it's called misplaced responsibility if I was to call DoorDash and question them on it if they would say oh we don't know and we and I would say oh yeah you do here's the proof underneath here write the names of the businesses that you believe that are maliciously uh, withholding tips and stealing and then he says I cannot wait to see the names <clears throat> um, I'm gonna try to get a list together I know at least two <laughs> at the moment Papa Gino's and Papa John's both of those now this video this uh, comment was due to the one of the videos the la one of the last videos I did about I was talking about my friend Eddie who went to Papa Gino's and um, to pick up eight pizzas, he delivered them, he knocked on the door, you know, knocked on the door, and the people came to the door and said, oh, thank you, Eddie, for dropping it off, I wish we had more, a more tip for you than we gave you, and he says, oh, that's that's okay, that $10 was great, and uh, they said, oh, we, we left you $50 in the, in the, uh, the app, and they, they were shocked, you know, and uh, anyways, long story short, they asked Eddie if he would go down to the store with them to talk to the manager and they went in and they uh the the guy was <laughs> i don't know if he yelled and screamed at him but i know that they got all their pizzas paid for in the money back and they got the 50 dollars back but that's only because the guy was probably nice enough not to call corporate and get the guy fired in other words he's lucky he didn't get fired and he should get fired for for stealing so this this goes on a lot folks this theft uh, especially where these individual um, corporations or companies who do business with DoorDash, they have an ability to to call up a, a driver by just hitting, you know, dispatch driver or whatever. I, I don't know if that's the exact button they press, but there's something they can do to get a driver to come to deliver food when they need one. Any of these businesses can. Um, and so... You know this this manager took upon himself to take the forty dollars out of the out of the fifty and leave ten for the driver. Isn't that just wonderful? And this is going on all over the place. And folks, if this is if you you're seeing this in your area, I mean, you should suspect that it's going on because it's not just one one store doing it, folks. They, a lot of these people have caught on to how to do it. You know, if and that's like they're manipulating the system. And then DoorDash. <laughs> is not doing anything about it no one's you know people are complaining but they're not doing anything about it this this needs to go national this this news needs to be on like the six o'clock news with one of those uncover videos anyone and i'm thinking of actually calling the news stations myself you can you can talk to um like an undercover an un, uncover team that d does that type of material and they'll you know i know in canada they have a CBC News that does these type of videos all the time. Like, you know, they uncover theft and all that. And if once that's exposed, then they can, then you can go after the, you know, you, then they can call up DoorDash and say, hey, do you know this is happening? Eventually, they'd have to put a stop to it. They'll make a way where the, there has to be a way where the companies, the corporations or the small companies cannot intercept any tip at all. It has to be locked out from their system. So with that said, I wanted to just read this before we go on to uh, the other comments because the other comments are from uh, are to do with the video that I'm making today. Okay, so this comment comes from Uber Jeep, Arizona. And um, this, is, this has to do with the video that I'm doing on upfront fares because Uber just... Uh, just put out a uh, upfront fare thing to explain stuff. Be but before I 
read that article to you. I want you to listen to what Uber Jeep says here. And by the way, thank you very much, Uber Jeep. Uh, so upfront fares, he says, upfront fares is a scam, which I always thought in my mind too. I say this because you will be okay with what the amount you see. Now, if someone tips you, how would you know? Same issue with, as before. If you accept an un upfront fare for $14, Uber knows you're okay with $14. The rider tips you $10, which, you, which means you should get $24. But Uber can keep the whole tip or even part of it. Either way, you know you're okay with $14 because they sent you the request and, and you said, okay, I'll take it. You just shorted yourself $10 and you don't even know it. No, that's absolutely true. Um, I, I could tell you so. I, I've told you guys in this in different videos and before how when I was doing, um, I was riding for Lyft. And I'm sure it's happened with Uber because I did Uber ride share too. But I haven't done Uber ride share in probably almost a year now, I think. Close to it anyways. But I said in one of my videos that um, I had dropped off a passenger who told me, hey, you know, you're a cool guy. I'm going to leave you a really good tip. I said, oh, thank you. He goes, yeah, I'm going to leave you 20 bucks. So I said, oh, you don't have to do that. He's like, no, I want to. He goes, I don't have cash, but I'll do it in the in the app. And he goes, let me show you. And he he showed me that he was doing it. He put he put, punched it in, boom, it went through. But it, so he was waiting a few seconds, but nothing come through. He goes, oh, don't worry, it'll, it'll come through. He goes, I got a split though, but hey, have a good one. Take care, right? I was like, thank you. So about five minutes later, whatever, it said, "Oh, your your uh, your passenger has tipped you five dollars," and I was like, "What?" And I was like, "I couldn't believe it, right?" So and I saw what he did. He committed the the button. I know he put it through. It was twenty bucks, and um, so I call up Uber um, Lyft support. Or I actually, you couldn't even call them at that time. You used to be able to talk to Lyft support, but they they shut that off unless it's changed. Because I haven't driven for Lyft in well over two years, but you used to be able to call them. So I texted them and I got live support and I said hi. I said this is so and so, and I'm dry. You know, I just got a uh, fare, and the man tipped me. And he tipped me twenty dollars, and you guys only sent me five dollars through. I go, are you? And I asked the guy. I said, are you? Are you guys like keeping part of our tips or something? He says, Oh no, we don't do that kind of practice here. You know, he texted back. He says, No, uh, he goes, that, that was five dollars. And I said, Sir, it wasn't five dollars because the man in the car showed me that he that he th he put twenty dollars in. He told me he was gonna put twenty dollars in. So the guy kept arguing with me and he's like, Well, I don't know what to tell you that it's five dollars. I said, All right, good day. And I just I just ended the chat with the guy, you know, and I was pissed, you know, because I knew that the guy tipped me the money. This is what the problem is with digital pay, with p having getting tips like this. I always used to love getting cash tips, folks, because cash tips, they can't intercept. But how are you going to convince these people to start doing it? You know, you could put a sign in your car if you do have a passenger saying, you know, in the back seat and said, "All as always, tips are so greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. But if you possibly could, could you please tip in, in cash instead of having them send it to the, uh, to the app? Because... Whenever, whenever the company can intercept the money, you're in big trouble. You, you're going to lose that. Now, with almost the same thing, there's the same adage that can go for deliveries. Okay, now some people would actually might even be insulted if you tell them, "Oh, I would. You, could you please tip me in cash?" But if you if you could like, if you talk to any of your regulars, people who you deliver to and you see a lot, or if you do see them, and and you could just mention to them, "Hey, listen, I." I know you, you tip me in the, in the app a lot, but is it possible if you could just leave a little envelope outside the door for me, uh, you know, with cash instead of putting it in the, um, you know, in the app because the, the companies are stealing. I mean, we need to start explaining this to the, cust to the customers. Um, and believe me, <clears throat> that customer who I talked to, I mean, who I read that thing or the 
pot before on the comments telling you that the customer went down to Papa Gino's to, 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 to tell the guy, hey, you, you didn't pay my driver the money that I gave him. You guys stole it, right? That was an, a really actionable, uh, you know, customer. Like, he, he, was, he took action on it, and he was concerned. I mean, most people, you know, you're given that kind of a tip. You don't want to go into the company. You want to go into the customer, right? All right, let me read the rest of this. Um, he said, the person working the software that day has a choice to make. Do you risk snagging your tip or just hope you don't, f or, and just hope that they don't find out? Or do they, do they stay honest and give the driver the amount the driver was okay paying, including the tip? Now this goes, you know, this goes hand in hand with, with both rideshare and delivery. But the fact that theft is going on, especially now, Especially now, theft in 2022, because of the, the state of the economy, people start getting desperate in, in whatever. But the companies are desperate, too. Uh, but they've been ripping us off ever since they existed, folks. They're just continuing to do it. They're not going to stop their practices. We have to help force them to do it. And, but we definitely need to make it transparent that we know they're stealing. And this is what, why this channel exists, folks, to help you guys and gals who drive and stuff to get this information out. out. Again, you know, before I move on with the upfront fare thing to read you, I just want to um, mention a video, that, uh, a live video that Pedro Santiago did the other night concerning um, Top Dasher, okay? I know this is a, a little side thing, and I was actually going to do a, a whole nother video on it, but while we're talking about it, about theft and all that we should just talk about top dasher so he interviewed just real quickly and short he interviewed a bunch of different channels right gig channels that are on youtube and i can't remember i think it was sin city something i can't remember the guy's name but he was like this top dasher channel that takes every single dash that comes through right and they were talking about how oh if you become a top dasher you get all the best fares you start to make all, all great money and all this stuff. Let me just tell you, Top Dasher is the reason why people are tipping like shit and why the rest of us are getting screwed. I blame it on Top Dashes. I blame it on Top Dashes because the rest of the community that's trying to decline those trash orders are getting screwed and not getting good money because it enables... It encourages the the um, the customers to not tip. If you keep picking up a non tip order, the guy, the person who's doing it is like, "Oh, this is great! I don't have to tip the driver anymore." Are you kidding me? I won't ever ever become top dasher in a million years. That means you have to take all of these crazy orders. One's going 10, 15, 20 miles for five dollars. Are you out of your mind? I mean, and Pedro, you better not, I mean, I'm, this is, I'm directing it to him. You, you always, oh, bet on you, bet on yourself. Oh, I'll never take the, I'll never take these trash orders. If you start converting over to top Dasha, you're no better than this other whole community, right? At least stick with the morals and laurels that you, that you were when you started your channel. And I'm not saying he's going to do that, but if he does, then he's, He's no better than any of these other channels. And I'll never be that type of channel, folks. We need to stop these practices, especially the theft and stealing. And then also uh, the companies, you know, you can't force someone to give you a tip, but you can force yourself not to take a non-tip order. You're a fool if you do. I don't care what, what the situation is. I don't care if you were making $400 a day as a top dasher. The fact that you're taking all of these idiot orders screws up the rest of the community because then when another guy goes to pick up an order that's not a top dasher, and, and sometimes he gets screwed with a non-tip order, he may not even know. It may be a new guy. He may not know that there was no tip in there. But this enables these customers to do that, so it's absolutely wrong. All right, let me uh, move on to, um, and if you want to check that video out over in this channel, you should watch it because it's it's really, it's really like I wanted to throw up listening to it, listening to these these guys talking about, oh, I take everything. They're a bunch of idiots, and they are fools and clowns. They're clowns. 
Okay? They think they're smart. And I bet you this is nothing more than a ploy from DoorDash to use some of these channels. Because I bet you some of these channels are like just people who indirectly work maybe even corporate offices and they start these channels to get you to believe oh top dash it's because they always want us to take all these orders folks don't do it all right let me uh move on to the upfront fares from uber i want to read that to you okay folks so i just wanted to do another comment from uber jeep i was going to go right into upfront fares but i i had to do this because i Totally forgot that Uber Jeep has a channel, and uh, I just subscribed to you, by the way, Uber Jeep. I am really sorry. Uh, I, you know, between me being so busy driving and everything, and then doing the videos and then reading comments, a lot of times I don't, I don't even click on other people's channels because I'm so like into what I was doing, and I, I need to do that more. So forgive me, folks. And if you guys have channels right let me know in the comments on the next on even on this video when you watch it just say hey dude i have a i have a channel click on so then i know and then i could because some people don't have channels even though they have a youtube account they you know what i mean so uber jeep i'm so sorry i'm gonna have to start watching your videos and thank you so much for commenting in here. Like, it helps the community big time. But anyways, Uber Jeep says, I just did an analysis of Uber Eats versus Uber X for the past week in my area. Will not be the same in your market, but here's what I ended up analyzing for what I drove. And then he, he did a video here. So I'm going to, let's do the video first. Let's watch, you know, at least part of it, or maybe we can watch the whole thing. I don't know how long it will be. And then I'm going to go into the upfront fears, all right? So let's click on Uber Jeep's video. What's up, y'all? This is Jay Watts with Uber Jeep AZ. And I'm breaking down on this little um, chart that I told you guys I was going to do regarding my analysis between Uber and Uber Eats. I kind of had to discipline myself and not go crazy. I didn't do any lift. I made sure that all my hours online were either with you know Uber or with Uber Eats. Sometimes I would kind of put it on, I would leave my Uber app running and just put it on like contacts or whatever or connect whatever they got just to make sure that, you know, I hit, I knew where all the zones and stuff was. I'm looking at my spreadsheet here. That's why I keep looking away from the camera. But, you know, I did 53 deliveries last week and I did 28 Uber X trips last week. So I wanted to break down the dollars per mile versus how much I was spending in fuel. Now, I would I put sixty five dollars in to start, and every night I only did Uber Eats. When I would only drive Uber Eats, I would end up using only a quarter tank of gas. So fifteen dollars worth of gas was netting me, you know, close to about a hundred, hundred twenty five dollars every time. Whereas with Uber, you know, in order to make that, it would almost I would have to run about a half a tank of gas just to make a hundred, hundred fifty dollars. So I'm using $30 to make $150 with Uber, whereas I was only using like $15 to make that with Uber Eats. But let's say one of my best days, what I can really do this thing on is let's say, you know, Saturday, August the 6th. I made $186. I did $80.14 in Uber X. I did $106.69 in um, deliveries. I like to use Saturday because it shows me using both a little bit. Now... The total hours I was online was six and a half hours. That was it, six and a half hours. And so I was averaging about $28.74 an hour. That was with four Uber trips. They were, you know, pretty long trips. Three of them was pretty long, one was pretty short. And I did 14 deliveries. Deliveries were like, you know, normal. So I did a whole day, my total paid mileage, the paid mileage, I say paid mileage because we know Uber won't pay you to go pick up somebody unless it's a long distance trip to go pick them up. So anything under like eight or nine miles, you're not being paid to go get that person. Even though you're burning that gas and burning that time, you're not being paid for it. Well, with delivery, you're being paid to go to the restaurant and to the people. So that's why I like delivery. They pay you for everything. But on Saturday, uh, my paid mileage for UberX was 82. I, 82 miles with people in the car. 82 miles with delivery, 62. So... Going 62 miles with delivery, 62 miles, I made $106.69 versus driving 82 miles with UberX with people in the car. 
and I went. I only got paid eighty dollars. <laughs> so, all he, right, folks. I, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna play the whole video here for you. So I'm gonna try to leave the links in the video here. But if if you can't, if I didn't or I forgot to leave the links, just go over to Uber Jeep AZ, and actually hit hit the subscribe button and uh, give them some love and watch that video analyzing Uber Eats versus Uber X. This is pretty interesting info because see, this is another reason why, and and this is tied into the um, the upfront fare thing. But this is the reason why I won't drive rideshare anymore because the the reason they're doing these upfront fares and, and trying to show you that they're changing an entire model is to keep people driving on the road. They know, listen, <laughs> they know people don't want to drive for Uber anymore or do rideshare because they're not even getting tipped well. Then this, you, I'm telling you, ask any driver who drives except. You may be blessed in some area of the world, I don't know, but 9 out of 10 people do not tip. Will you have days where every person in your car tips you? Yeah, it's it's very rare, but you're going to be lucky when you do when you get that, when that hits, okay? But most of the time, folks, you will not you will not get tipped. These people, I mean, I don't know what it is. And then, and this is proving it because Uber Jeep here, Jay, he's, he's showing you, he's showing you that, and Uber Eats is no, is no bargain either, but at least with Uber Eats, I guess you can make more money, right? But here's the thing real quick in my market, it's been terrible Uber Eats, like it's constant, super long, whacked out deliveries that are going like you know seven dollars for like 15 miles or it's they're giving me low balls between a dollar 80 and four dollars and five dollars and even six dollars but it's always more miles than money when i put when i put uber eats on with doordash i can get a bunch of good ones it's doordash is the most prevalent one that you can make money at but they're also the ones that that steal from you okay they're constantly stealing. So, anyways, let's move on to the upfront fares. And, and by the way, Uber Jeep, thank you so much. I did not know you had a channel. Now that I know, now I'm going to be checking you out. And um, thanks a lot for doing what you're doing because you're helping the community. All right, let's move on to the upfront fare part. Okay, I, I want to first show you this, folks. This is in the opportunities tab. If, if you don't have Uber, I mean, look how ridiculous this is. Now, this is... This is basically for Uber, um, Uber Eats, I believe, because you see, they sent me a long time ago. Uber Eats or Uber sent me a a um, an email telling me it was in it was in my inbox telling me that we've noticed that you have not been doing um, ride share in a while, so we're converting you over to a new system for Uber Uber Eats, right and. Which is crazy because Uber, and, and let me tell you two different things. Uber Eats and Uber, right, they were kind of intertwined, which is, is good and bad. It was good that if you were doing Uber Eats, you could take some of those promotions that they were doing for Uber, and it would tie right into to Uber Eats. So, like, if it was, like, 30 trips for 100, 100 an extra 150 bucks or 160 whatever it was, if you did all Uber Eats, you could still get that 160. But because they noticed that I was just doing Uber Eats, they converted me over to a new system. Look how horrible this system is. A hundred extra dollars by completing a hundred trips. Oh, so you're going to get one dollar extra? It's the same thing as those stupid challenges that DoorDash does, with, or that they used to do, where you'd get oh f do get an extra fifteen dollars for fifteen dashes. I mean, give me a break. What? It's not. If that was. Even if that was $300, folks, for 100 trips, it's still bad. 100 trips is a lot of trips to do, folks. And how long do you have to complete them? One week? Let me, let me click on it and see what it actually says. It says, your quest progress, August 11th from 4 a.m. to Thursday the 25th. Okay, so... You have, it's not an entire month, but it's like a half a month because let's, let me look at the, uh, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, it's 15 days you have to do 100 trips. Now, can you possibly do 100, 100 trips between that time? Yeah, 
but you're getting one dollar per trip. Why would you even want to do that? You can make up the t you can make up this money by getting tips from the customers. You don't need this. This is all crap. There's nothing that has changed. Nothing new under the sun with these companies. They're still going to continue to screw us, folks. All right, let me read the upfront fears. Here we go. Okay, folks. So here is the. Uh, this came into my inbox in, in my Uber app. Okay. And it's more propaganda and lies uh, because eventually, no matter what, folks, these companies will continue to manipulate and steal from the drivers. Mark my words on that, folks. They may do a few things at first, or they may even be slightly honest. And when I say slightly honest, they're not, that's not honest. It's still stealing. But they'll make it seem as if you're going to make the money, okay? So let's read this. More transparent, earn, more transparent earnings. See how much you'll make and where you'll go. <clears throat> it will be now easier to decide if a trip is worth your time and effort. Really? Isn't it always that they're trying to get us to take a fare, and when you don't take one, they punish you and then don't give you any more uh, calls coming through? I mean, you ever notice that? And it may even be a busy day like Friday. Let me tell you something, folks. In a really busy area, if you're not getting something within 15, 20 minutes of where you are after you've declined orders from Uber, then they are definitely putting you in a timeout punishment. I'm telling you. They, they, you can't see it. It's not up front. And they talk, talk about upfront fears, right? There's nothing up front about Uber. It's all deception and lies. Um, says, right when you receive a request, you'll see the estimate. The estimated fare, the the pickup and drop off locations, right? How do you know that you're seeing the estimated fare? How do you know they're not manipulating that? Do you have a do they have access for the drivers to get into the back end of their systems? No, of course not. You'll never get that. This is all a psychological operation. You know what a psyop is, folks? They're pulling a psyop on all these drivers. It's it's insane. And see, that's why my channel exists to expose this stuff, folks. Okay, the fares you'll see won't be based on fixed time and distance rates alone. Um, let me tell you one other thing, too. Oh, let me read the rest, and then I'll tell you. Upfront fares can be based on several factors. Some you know well, like time and pickup time and destination, and some are new, like demand and destination, right? Um, and we're going to move on to the next part in a second. I'll click that learn more in a second. But uh, I used to take lots of fares. I'm sure most of you have taken fares where when you did ride share or whatever for Lyft or Uber. So you, you'll pull up to, they'll say, oh, I'm going to make this, this is going to be two stops. I'm going to be going to the liquor store up here and then I'm going to, um, to the grocery store and then I'm going back home. It might be a re round, a round fare, round trip, right? So you pick up the person, you take them into these places. The first place the guy goes, yeah, he may be in there five minutes. He comes out. The next one he goes to is the is the um, you know the supermarket. So now he says, "I'll be out in five minutes." He goes in there. You're sitting in your car for thirty minutes waiting for this guy to come out, and you already and and you know that the old trick too is they're like they leave some of their contents in the car. Like they'll leave like the jug of you know vodka or whatever they got right. And the reason they do it is so. If you take off, that's considered theft because you they had something in the car, right? So now you're saying to yourself, well, I can't leave. Now it becomes 40 minutes. It's 40 minutes later, and the guy finally comes out. And now you're pissed, and you're like, uh, why did it take you so long? Oh, sorry, man. I had to get a few things in here. And he's got a whole cot full of stuff. So you load up the back of the thing, you know. You, you take the guy, and you drop him off. And at the end of your affair... You, you didn't even get a tip from the guy, and you didn't even get paid the time that you sat for, or it was very minimal, like it was like 15 cents uh, every like five minutes or something. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, the time. When I used to be a taxi driver, we used to charge $30 an hour, or, or 35 and this is back in like the 1990s. I think it was 30 no, it might have even been 40 bucks an hour. It might have been 40. I think it was 40. So you'd sit for a whole hour, but you'd get paid 40 bucks. Now, that's cool because you're not using gas or, or whatever, right? And back then, it was the money was, it seemed better, right? But it really wasn't. But yeah, it was a little better. But at least you were getting paid. With Uber, 
they don't they never paid you for the time they always i mean you think you got paid and when you looked in the trip desk uh, the trip information it will say oh yeah you got paid for time what was it a dollar 60 for waiting one dollar and 60 cents waiting for um for 40 minutes or an hour crazy all right i just wanted to mention that because it's important because it's all tied into this crap so says more transparent earnings in some cities it'll be it'll now be easier to decide if a trip is worth your time and effort right right when you receive a request you'll see the estimated fare the pickup drop drop off locations uh see how much you'll make and where you'll go how it works the fares you'll see won't be based on fixed time and distance rates alone upfront fares can be based on several factors some you'll know well and the time you pick up from the destination blah 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 i already read that to you real-time adjustments upfront fares are created in real time and will reflect what's happening around you here's the two and i just mentioned to you what real time is because when i took fares before like i said you may you could be sitting and waiting for someone and you don't get paid <clears throat> let's see um you get paid very little the fare you sh are shown will upfront will be higher than than when the demand is higher uh the request with the longest pickup in the same area will get will, will get a higher fare yeah right better fares on short trips upfront fares will make you your short uber x trips more valuable to you you will get a slightly higher amount oh slightly higher what's slightly higher what two cents one cent and that that's what slightly higher could be folks so don't, I mean, they're not being specific. They're being generalized. It's very vague what they're saying. <clears throat> and, and, and the only way we'll be able to find out is more Uber drivers who do this and they report it on YouTube. But I wouldn't even trust some of these channels because they, they may lie to you, okay? Um, anyways, in slightly lower amount on longer trips. Why, why is it slightly lower amount on a longer trip? Why? The longer trips, you should be getting paid the most money. Listen, folks, I used to know the fares from where I, because I live in Massachusetts, right? We used to, I mean, I never went to New York City in a taxi to go, to go to, uh, drop someone off, but I know some people who have, and I knew the dispatches that told me the, the different fares. Do you know what the fares was in, say, like 1998 to go to New York City? Take, take a wild guess. I want you to write in the comments, okay, what you think. So, <clears throat> a, a fare from, say, Boston to New York City, right, would be, back then, was like 800 bucks. 800, or maybe a little bit more. Sometimes, the, 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 it depends what the company was, but they'd give the guy a break and maybe give it to him for 600. But that was, like, the cheapest. If you took a person to, to New York City from Boston right now, to, to to New York City, it would probably, remember what it said be, before, like the maximum amount you can make on a long distance is 300 bucks, 300, and Rideshare Professor did, did a video on this a while ago, and it, if you go even longer, you can't make any more than that 300, it's, it's, it's capped off at 300 bucks, do you see how asinine that is? And this was, and I'm telling you about 1998, folks. We're talking a long time ago, almost 20 years ago, or more, because it, it go even goes back to the to the to the 80s, because those fares from like the 80s to the up until like probably the 2000s, the rates didn't change. They stayed right around where they were, and they, and those were fair, accurate rates. Or actually, I thought they were. I thought it probably should have been more. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute, I could take a Greyhound bus or a Peter Pan for $10 to New York or whatever. Yeah, that's true. But, re again, you're being able to hire a person right away, going, no questions asked, boom, you get in the car and you go. With those other things, those other options, sometimes you have to stop. They make stops. They, they might drive slower. You can't di um, di divert to any other area like if you say hey i know a shorter way can you go this way the bus has to go a certain way and then it drops you off at like a location this will take you right to the location that you want to go so there's a lot of benefits to be able to hire a cab now 
Uber eats. I mean, Uber comes in and changes all the fares and knocks them down five hundred dollars down from where it was going to New York. I mean, that this is what I'm talking about. This is why we're getting into this part of the upfront fare thing. It's it's insane. Now it says if things change, if there's an unexpected traffic traffic and the trip gets a lot longer, your fare will increase. Oh, but they won't tell you how much the the fare will increase. Will will it in, increase by one cent? By ten cent, by fifty cents, by a dollar, by five dollar. No, they're not telling you that. Okay, it's it's a joke. This whole thing is a joke. If there's a change of pickup or drop off address in the app on your way, your fare will be updated as you go. Oh, updated but not increased, huh? Um, frequently asked questions. Can I switch back and to to the old experience? Let's see what this says. No, but keep in mind that you now will have a lot more information that will help you des- decide which trips are worth your time and effort. Why am I no longer able to view time and distance rates? Oh, why? why? Because they don't want you to see it. We, we will no longer post set time and distance rates since you will see the fare on every request before you accept it with upfront fares. You'll have more information to decide if the trip is worth your time and effort. <coughs> Folks, this is nothing more than sleight of hand, okay, and it's like a bait and switch, okay? They're giving you an the old they're taking you from the old system of stealing to the new system of stealing. That's all it is. And believe me, folks, I know what I'm talking about. I've been doing this a long time. I I've I drove every type of except I've never driven an 18 wheeler truck. But I've done lots of things. I even drove for um, for uh, hotels. I used to drive those medium-sized buses before the CDL rules came in. Remember, Co- commercial driver license? You didn't need a commercial driver license to to do that. I learned the old way, with, you know, with, with a regular license. They changed everything. That was that was to bring in more money for the government, so they could charge you a whole bunch of money to do the same job you do without being charged, okay? So that was another scam. How are fares determined now if not per mile and per minute? Upfront fares are different in that they do not, they're not based on fixed time and distance rates alone. Upfront fares can be based on several factors. Some of you know, all right, so we already know this. I read this. This is crazy. Why am I earning less on some trips? Oh, this is a good one. Upfront fares are different in that they are not based on fixed time. See, this is the same thing. They, they're giving you the old gobbledygook, as we say. Upfront fares can be based on several factors. Some you know well, blah, blah, blah. No matter what, you'll see the fare and every. This is just a oh, wow. This is insane, folks. This is just rhetoric. What is not including cl- included in upfront fi- fares? Items that are not included in upfront fares are wait time fees and trips. Which is the most important important part of it, folks? I just got done telling you about the wait times. How and and I didn't even I hadn't even read this article or this information before I just told you about that. So imagine this: what is not included in upfront fares? Items that are not included in upfront fares are wait time fees and trips, which continue to be added as soon as you get paid out. So if you can't track, I mean, first of all, we're not stupid, folks, as drivers. When you're in the car, if you do have a stop, if you're doing these stupid fares, make sure you use a timer to to show how much time you've been in there. They're never going to pay you what you're worth, folks. They'll never pay you. They'll always pay you what they can get away with paying you. And it's all, this is a joke. This is an absolute joke. Now, I haven't checked out Rideshare Professor's channel in a while, but I'll bet you he's already done a video on this. I'll bet you. All right, so let's let's go with this. Uh, let's see. Amounts related to quests and other driver promotions will also continue to be added to your balance as they're paid up. Do fares still account for long pickups? Yes. Oh, really? If there's a tra- if there's extra traffic, will I still earn the same amount? If there's an un- unexpected traffic and the trip gets a lot longer, you'll see an increased fare in the trip receipt. Oh yeah, by what a dollar fifty? Unbelievable. If the rider changes the true destination, and oh, we already did that. Will my fare decrease whenever I find a route that's shorter and faster? We already went over that. Okay. There's one other thing I need to read to you, so let me move on to that. So 
this was also in my inbox and this was a, this came on the second day. Like it came in two different, two different days. So it says how upfront fears impact your earnings. We expect most people in your city to see neutral, a positive impact on earnings as a result. What, what is this? We expect to see neutral or positive impact. How about negative impact? Negative. Cause people are not, I mean, I already see this. I see right through this scam. I mean, this is a scam folks. These companies, uh, they just—they're just doing psychological operations on people. They're, you think Uber's going to change for the better of of drivers? Are you kidding me? <laughs> if they were forced to do everything great, they would probably just close up ship and just go bankrupt. Like uh, back in the nineteen eighties, there was a guy named uh, D. Lorenzo or Lorenzo or something. He owned. Uh, an airlines called Eastern Airlines. The movie, uh, if you've never seen it, it's called uh, Wall Street with Michael Douglas. Came out in like 1988, and it had uh, what's his name, um, Martin Sheen's son. Um, uh, what I can't remember his first name. Well, anyways, the point of it is, um, he he was in that movie, and uh, there's a part in the movie where Gordon Gecko he's at a meeting. And he's trying to uh, talk about shareholdership and all this stuff. And he comes out and says, greed is good, right? Greed is good. And he says, I am not a destroyer of companies. But but see, he destroyed the, the airlines, basically. And that's what the Eastern Airlines thing, what happened was Lorenzo, they, they were all striking, like the employees, because they wanted more fair wages and, and better it benefits and pay and all this stuff, right? And what did the guy that owned the company do? He completely dismantled the company and, and just let everyone go. Instead, of, he was so greedy that he'd rather take the money he had already earned than, than flourish the business and, and give the employees more money. So this is what I see Uber in the future doing or whatever. You know, they, they want to get rid of people. They don't want people doing the jobs. They want robots doing them. All right, so we expect most people in your city to see a neutral or positive impact on earnings as a result of these changes, which will start going into effect on Thursday. To help ease this transition, you're eligible to get a special quest if you complete 100 trips in the next two weeks. You'll get $100. Oh, that not that so special? What a nice transition, huh? <laughs> now... I'm not going to read these facts because we already just did, but like, this is a joke, folks. This upfront fair thing is complete joke. Um, so don't fall for it. And if I was you, I mean, if you absolutely have to drive to do it, to make the money, I understand. But if you can try to find other apps or other ways, or even other W2 jobs or something to go to, I would definitely suggest doing that. And I wanted to give you guys an update on my situation as far as uh, W-2. I haven't, just because I quit that other job doesn't mean that I'm not looking for other W-2 jobs. But recently, just quickly, what happened was, I was, this is about a week and a half ago, I was delivering to, I, I was actually picking up an order for, for uh, DoorDash. And I walk in, and this nice old man that owned this pizza shop, it's like a, private pizza shop, not a corporation. He's from Egypt. And, uh, anyways, he, he, uh, he said, uh, Oh, you're, you're here to pick up the DoorDash. He goes, Oh, are you, are you busy right now? Do you need, can you help me? And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, I need a driver. My driver's quit or he's not here. And cause I'm having a hard time and this and that. And it was slow. It was a Tuesday actually. And, um, and he goes, I just had a hernia operation and I can't pick up heavy things and my wife can't make it today. Would you possibly be able to just help me take some stuff out of my car? And I was like, oh, absolutely. Guy was such a sweetheart, nice guy. So I did. I helped him take all the stuff in. I put it in the walk-in cooler. It was all this heavy stuff. It was like cheese and all kinds of big blocks of cheese and stuff because he does pizzas. And um, he ends up asking me, hey, uh, do you want a job? You know, And I said, what do you mean? He says, well, he goes, I, I need someone for the daytime and this and that and, you know, for lunch. And 
you know, would you like to work here? And I, he asked me, and I was like, you know, uh, maybe I, you know, that sounds kind of good. Uh, yeah. And I just, I said, yeah, I'll do it. And, uh, cause I know Tuesdays is one of the days I take off. So long story short, it's two, three weeks later or two weeks later now. And, uh, I actually made him a proposal like, Hey, can I work Monday through Friday from like 10 30 in the morning to two 30 and do lunch? And then have my nights open, and he he agreed to it. So he hired me, and I'm getting under the table cash, which is great uh, from him. And uh, I like that. And it's it's not great money. It's probably I mean I'm getting he's giving me like twelve bucks an hour, right? You might say, wait a minute, uh, how come you're not making fifteen the minimum? Well, because when you're doing delivery driving, it's different, right? Because I get tips too. So I don't know what it'll average out to, but I've been making like seventy, eighty bucks for lunch which I'm happy with because I used to only make 50, but now I have guaranteed money coming in. So now I have a little bit of a one foot in one door and another foot in the, in the app door. Okay. And I suggest other people to do this because if something goes wrong, the apps go down, at least you can be working in a place you already have working. So at least I have something coming in on the other side. Wanted to give you that update and to help you motivate you to do some other things too, folks. Well, I hope this information helped you folks. Um, at least you have uh, another way to um, basically make some decisions on what you uh, what you want to do. Because ultimately, what's going to happen is, folks, they they the algorithm will always be set to make more money for Uber. Um, they'll always be shaving money off the top. You know, if you drive for ride share and stuff, and even even the Uber Eats, it's the same. It's the same thing, and they're going to continue these practices. They're going to continue to hide tips from um, and hold out the tips for an hour after you have um, delivered food to the customers and stuff like that. When you do Uber Eats, <clears throat> and you know, I'm <clears throat> I do I do keep Uber Eats on in the background when I'm doing other apps. But I'm slowly fading away from Uber Eats, and eventually I'll completely just stop using them because it's not worth it. And in my area, because I had been doing a beta test for the past couple of months, a month and a half or so, and on Fridays, are you kidding me? No matter what, the the app should be ring ding a ling off the hook on Fridays all day long, and it's not. Now, if I... I should do in the reverse, well, I did some of it, but I should do in the reverse, do Uber Eats, where I take every fare, just for like two or three hours, just to see if they would keep me going, and I, I'll guarantee if I test it, that yes, it will keep you going, but you'll be taking no and low tip orders, so it's not worth it. So in the end, folks, just make the best decisions that you can, and... Um, you know, maybe you might want to move on to a different app that may pay a little bit differently or better or more or whatever. But again, when I mentioned this in all the other videos that I that I've done, that basically all of the app companies pretty much follow suit of what the other ones are doing. And even if they're not, they usually adopt the same policies because if they see that a company is doing a practice and their maxim and the company, the corporation is maximizing their profits. Some other companies are like, you know what? Why are we? Why don't we adopt the same one that Uber's doing? And they all jump on it in a roundabout way. All of the apps are pretty much the same. There's no change. So this is where, and I'm again, I don't ever want to become an employee. No, who does? I don't want the government to tell me I got to be an employee of a company. Yeah, but here's the thing. It's not really about that. It's changing these these designs of the way the, the companies do something and trying to force them to do it a different way in favor. It, it's not even in favor of us. It's just be fair. Transparency and fairness. That's all the drivers are really uh, looking for, right, in the end? I mean, so anyways, could you guys and gals write in the comments what you think? I know this was a long video, but... Um, you know, I just had to put my two cents in and just talk about and show you what was going on. Um, and in and, and a final thought here 
is that <clears throat> with Uber upfront fares and all that, this is just another redesigned uh, smoke and mirrors to draw people in to say, oh, look, Uber has changed. They're going to do stuff for us. They're going to show us that they're actually going to pay us what we're worth. It's not about that, folks. They're always going to keep you at mediocre level. You'll never prosper. You'll never get above a $30 an hour mark. I mean, I'm, I'm most people in in the markets are making 15 bucks an hour to 20 if you're lucky. You can't prosper with that type of money. You need to be 30, 40, 50 dollars an hour to to do anything in especially in this economy in 2022. So it's pretty sad. So with that said, folks, I'm going to let you go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys and gals on the next one. Take care.